Hello everybody, it's Tom Seidner, and in this video we're going to do another simple electronics project, uh, this time with our Carrera 132 digital control unit. Now, before we go any further in this video, I want to give this disclaimer. This project will absolutely 100% void your warranty on your Carrera Digital 132 control unit. So if yours is still under warranty or you're worried about destroying your unit, then I suggest you don't try this. Um, if you do try this, then it's all on you. I accept no responsibility if you damage your control unit in any way. So let's talk about what we're going to do today. So what we're going to do today is a fairly simple project. It is one of the projects that I've wanted to do since I bought my Carrera Digital 132 track. Uh, one of the things that I've always wanted to have on my track was a call button. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a call button? Well, here you go. So this is the call button. And I placed them strategically around the track. I have three of them here and I plan to eventually put one in that corner and one in that corner so if somebody's racing on the other side of the track they'll be able to reach them and the way they work is if somebody's racing around the track like Co officer Connor O'Brewer here and an accident happens like poor Sally here on the racetrack then the person who has the accident can push the button and it will suspend the race As you can Ocean. see old officer uh, Connor is uh, over there sitting and it will suspend the software, it will also suspend the head unit and then um, the car that's in question can be put back on the track and once the car is back on the track then you press the call button again and uh, Three, two, one, go. the race will continue now one thing I want to note is that you can uh, stop the race with one call button and start the race with another call button in this uh, in this configuration so ever since I bought my track I've wanted the ability to be able to stop the race whenever there's a, a car go off the track and be able to have the person put the car back on the track and um, then start the race once they have the car back on the track and I spent many hours thinking about how to do this and I had considered several different options one of the options would be to actually program the call buttons through my Arduino that could wirelessly talk to um, Smart Race, but then it would limit it only to working with Smart Race, and I would only be able to do it when I had Smart Race running, and I wanted to be able to do it whenever I was just running cars around the track without even having Smart Race attached. And so I thought about it, and I thought about it, and finally one day it dawned on me. I have the ability right now to be able to do that. Because if I'm running a race and a car goes off the track, I can go over to the head unit and I can hit the enter button on the head unit and it will actually stop the race. It will pause the race and then if uh, once I put the car back on the track, I can press it again and it will go again. Now, the thing is, that's not very handy because it's not really available to everybody. It's way over on the control unit and it's a little bitty tiny button about that big. So it's, it's hard to remember to reach over and press that when your car wrecks. So it dawned on me, if I already have this functionality built into the control unit, why don't I just tap into that functionality? And that is what I did. So before we go any further, I do want to say that this was not a very technical project. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with this. So if for some reason somebody else has come up with this idea first, I'm not trying to steal your thunder. If you did, go ahead and comment in the uh, subject below and give yourself credit. So with that out of the way, let's go to the computer and I'll show you in graphics how I install and set up these call buttons on my track. So the first thing is you're going to have to take the back off of your control unit. And on the back of your control unit, as you can see mine here, now mine's gonna look a little different than yours because mine has my digital to analog converter um, here on the side. So I've got a bunch of wires here that you're not gonna have. So yours is gonna be just like mine, minus this uh, control unit on the back. And what you're gonna do is you're going to take this little cover off the back of your control unit and it has several screws. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12 screws, and then a 13th screw, which has a sticker over it here that is going to tell you that you're voiding your warranty, and you are, and it's also going to have a weird um, hex screw inside of there that I was able to get out with a flat blade screwdriver, a very small one. Um, and so you're going to need to take those screws out to start this project. Okay, so once you get the cover off, you're going to see your circuit board area for your control panel. Now, yours might look a little different than mine because I have a bunch of extra wires here, but you can ignore all those. But your circuit board is going to look pretty much exactly the same as mine. And if you look at in this area right here, you're going to have some solder points. And those solder points are going to be for your buttons. You can see that the buttons have multiple pins that come through here. So what we need to do is we need to locate the pins that go to our enter button. So my suggestion to you to make sure that you have the right solder points for this project is to put a to put an electronic meter on here, uh, check for continuity. Uh, you should not have continuity between the two buttons whenever you um, the button has not been pressed. And then when you press the button, you should have continuity. And that's how it works. When you press the button, it completes the circuit and tells it that, okay, it's time to pause the race. Now in this picture here, you're going to see that I actually found the solder points that went to the button. And you can compare this to, to yours. And I put a black Sharpie over the solder points that go to the inner button. So I not get confused when I started soldering. I recommend you do the same thing. And then once I uh, had those solder points uh, marked out, I went and soldered some wire onto my control unit. Now, you only need two wires for this project, but I had this three wire connector sitting around and I had male and female connectors for it. So I thought this would just be easy for my project. So I just used this. Uh, you could also use two wires and then maybe something like a headphone jack that you could actually put the jack in the side of the case and then plug the, the headphone jack in there. But I didn't have that on hand and I wanted to use something I had on hand because I didn't want to have to order the stuff and wait for it to come in. And this worked out for me. So in this case, I just left the brown wire unused and just kind of taped it down to the motherboard so it would be out of the way and it wouldn't interfere with anything. If you look here on the left, you find this big open area on the left. It's not the first two solder points, but it's the um, two adjacent to it and the two adjacent to it. And I use these two. All four of these are for the button. Now, the um, ones on the bottom and the ones at the top are the ones that are separated by the button. And then their circuit gets closed when you push the button. And so these become attached when the button is pushed. And so then I just soldered my wire onto those. And then I routed my wires out the side. As you can see here, I took a Dremel tool and I made a little notch in my case here to run my wires out. I also had to make a notch in the uh, cover, just about right here where I'm pointing now, so that the wire would come out the cover and then out the case and out the front. And here's what it looks like after I put the back back on. I put all the screws back in and this is what it looks like underneath. And this is a picture of the wire coming out of the control unit once I got my track put back together and I just hid the connector down behind a banner that I have on my track. And this is the male connector uh, showing the male connector and I have a female connector that matches that, that plugs into it that I can run to the control buttons. And here's a picture of the control buttons that I purchased from Amazon. I will put a link in the description down below of the you know to these buttons I really like these now these buttons are really good buttons because they are non latching most of the buttons that you get like this are latching and you when you press them down they stay pressed down and then you have to turn them to release them and that's not what I wanted I wanted something that you just press down and it would pop right back up and so these specific buttons do that they're a good quality button and they work very well as you can see here I located them on my racetrack in three different places, but it is unlimited how many call buttons you can have with this setup. This is what the inside of the call button looks like, and when you wire up the call buttons, you need to make sure that you wire them up in normally open mode. So these call buttons 
come with two modes. Normally closed mode, which is pins one and two, which means that there's normally connection going through the button, and when you push the button, it disconnects it. That is not what we want. We want the other mode, which is normally open mode, which means that normally there's no connection going through the button, and when you push the button, it creates a connection, and that's the one we want. So I wired up my buttons to three and four here accordingly. I also drilled a hole in my box and ran my cord up through there. I also screwed my box down to the track so that it wouldn't move around. And once that was all done, I screwed the tops back onto my button and I uh, tested them. So now that we've got the connection connected to the control unit and we have the male connector coming off of it and we have the push buttons wired up, we need to wire the push buttons to the female adapter that goes into the male adapter connected to the control unit. And so we're going to talk about that next. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have one cord from each button going to the one side of the terminal on the inside of the control unit and the other cord from the button going to the other side. So that anytime we hit a button, it's going to make a connection no matter what button we press. Now, in order for this to work correctly, we're going to have to make sure that each button goes all the way back to the connector on the control unit. And so here I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like. So we're going to take the left side of this button and we're going to hook it to the cable that's going to the control unit on the red side and then we're going to take the other side of the button and put it on the orange side. I've used red and orange for my cables but you can use any color you want. Just make sure that one side of the button goes to one and one side goes to the other. Now when we want to add another button we just do the same thing. So we're going to terminate one side of each button to the red side and one side of each button to the orange side. And as long as you do that, you're going to have it set up so that any button that's pressed is going to trigger the pause. Now, you can still press the button that's on the control unit, or you can press any of the other buttons. As long as when you press them, one of the buttons connects the circuit and, and tells the control unit that you want to pause the race. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed doing this. This is going to be a major upgrade to my track. I'm really looking forward to racing my friends now with these call buttons where somebody can just hit it, stop the race, put their car back on, hit it, and then it'll go through the three, two, one, and let us start racing again. That is going to be a major, major improvement in our racing because it was a major thing whenever somebody would um, wreck, you know, so one person would forget to stop running or one person would stop running and then the other person would start running before they started running and because they wrecked they had an advantage. It was a big deal and this has really rectified that problem so I'm really looking forward to this. As always, if you guys have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. I always answer my questions. I try to check daily to see if there's any questions on my videos and I try to answer them appropriately. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I put new videos out. And if you like my videos, please subscribe because it really helps me out a lot if you subscribe. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And until I see you guys again, happy racing.